This video is the final chapter in a series about the GCSE physics topic of energy, designed with AQA GCSE combined science or physics in mind. By the end of this video, you should be able to differentiate between renewable and non-renewable energy resources. You should be aware that energy resources can be used to generate electricity, but also describe how some can be used in transport and heating. You should be able to describe how renewable and non-renewable energy resources can be used to generate electricity. And finally, you should be able to evaluate the use of each of these. Energy resources can be described as renewable or non-renewable based on whether it's possible to obtain more of that resource in the time it takes us to use it. Non-renewable resources are sometimes referred to as finite. All of the resources we're going to look at in this video can be used to generate electricity, but some can also be used directly to heat homes or fuel transport. For instance, in addition to electrical solar panels, in countries near to the equator where there's a lot of sunshine, solar systems can be used to directly heat water for use in homes. While biofuels are commonly burned in power stations, they can also be used to power cars instead of petrol or diesel. And it's even possible to power a rocket with nuclear fission reactions, although you wouldn't want to use one in your car. Often the suitability of a particular energy resource for these uses comes down to its reliability and also the equipment required. You couldn't use a wind turbine to power a car directly as it would destroy the aerodynamics of the car and also you wouldn't be able to go anywhere on a calm day. Electricity can be generated from four different non-renewable energy sources. Crude oil, or oil for short, coal and gas or natural gas or methane are all examples of fossil fuels. These were formed over millions of years from ancient biomass. Also, we can generate electricity by using radioactive metals such as uranium and plutonium. In order to generate electricity from oil, coal or gas, the fuel must first be combusted, which means burned in oxygen. When the fossil fuel is burned, a huge amount of energy is transferred by heating to a reservoir of water, which turns into steam. The steam can then be used to turn a turbine, and the turbine can be used to turn a generator. In the generator, an electrical conductor interacts with a magnetic field, and this is what generates the electricity. We undergo quite a similar process using nuclear fuels like uranium and plutonium, but these don't need to be burned. Instead, they undergo a process called nuclear fission, which is also sometimes known as radioactive decay. As the atom splits apart, again a huge amount of energy is transferred by heating, so from this point onwards the process is still the same. The heat heats the water, which turns into steam, which turns the turbine, which turns the generator. In the UK, around 60% of our electricity is generated from non-renewable energy resources. This means that we already have a large number of fossil fuel power plants and 15 nuclear power plants. So for the time being, it makes sense to carry on using these resources because we're already equipped to use them. We already have all of the infrastructure that we need. Another big advantage of these non-renewable energy resources is that they're extremely reliable. In other words, we can always guarantee that we have a supply of electricity. It doesn't fluctuate due to the time of day or the weather or the seasons. One big advantage of nuclear power is that it's an extremely energy dense resource. And this means we only need a small amount of fuel to generate a large amount of electricity. In terms of disadvantages, the biggest one is that these sources are non-renewable. In other words, they're going to run out and they're doing so quite rapidly. But also we can think about the environmental impacts. Oil, coal and gas, when burned, release carbon dioxide. And this is a greenhouse gas and it's contributing to global warming. In terms of the nuclear fuel, there isn't any carbon dioxide emissions, but we do need to worry about the radioactive waste being produced, which must be disposed of very, very carefully. There's also a risk of a nuclear accident. Time for a quick progress check. Pause the video and write down some answers to these questions. Oil is an example of a non-renewable energy resource, so we need to name two other non-renewable energy resources. So we could have the other two fossil fuels, coal and gas, or we could have nuclear power, so uranium or plutonium. Then two disadvantages of using oil might be the fact that it's non-renewable or the fact that it produces CO2 emissions. In the UK, around 40% of our electricity is generated from renewable energy resources like wind. The wind, which is generated by air currents caused by the sun heating the Earth's atmosphere, can be used to turn a turbine like these ones, and then that turbine turns a generator, which generates electricity. Turbines are also used directly in tidal power, wave power and hydroelectric systems. In a geothermal system, heated water from the Earth's crust is used to turn a turbine, while biofuels can be burned and used like fossil fuels. 
solar panels directly absorb the sun's energy. In hydroelectric power plants, water is stored behind a man-made dam at a relatively high altitude, and in this reservoir it's a store of gravitational potential energy. The water is then released from behind the dam, and as it falls, the gravitational potential energy is converted to a store of kinetic energy. As the water falls, it's used to turn a turbine, and the turbine turns a generator, and this generates electricity. Geothermal power stations are found in areas with natural hot water springs. They also use turbines and water to turn them, but here the water is in the form of steam. Initially, hot water is pumped up to the surface under high pressure. At the surface, the pressure is dropped, and this means that the water turns into steam, even though it's not at 100 degrees C. The steam is used to turn the turbine, and the turbine is connected to a generator, which generates electricity. Then the steam is cooled in a cooling tower, and once it's cool, it's pumped back into the Earth's crust. Strictly speaking, a biofuel is any fuel made out of a living thing, so even using wood to heat your home counts as a biofuel. But when we're talking about electricity, we tend to be talking about bioethanol or biogas. Initially, food crops like maize or sugarcane are fermented to make ethanol, and because it's ethanol that's been made out of a living thing, we call it bioethanol. Additionally, it's possible to allow food waste to decompose in order to produce methane, which we sometimes call biogas. The bioethanol or biogas is then burned, just as we would burn a fossil fuel in a fossil fuel power station. The energy that's released in this is used to heat a reservoir of water, and then, you've guessed it by now, the steam turns a turbine and the turbine turns a generator. Solar power can be used directly to make hot water for heating, but also to generate electricity. Unlike the other renewable energy resources we've looked at, this doesn't involve any turbines. Instead, the solar panels directly absorb radiation from the sun, and they transfer this energy as direct current. Alternatively, solar power can be used in hot water panels, and these use the sun's energy to heat a store of water. Before we look at some advantages and disadvantages of these different ways of generating electricity, let's have a progress check to make sure you've understood what we've covered so far. Pause the video and write down some answers. The type of power plant that uses energy from the Earth's core is a geothermal power plant. Ethanol is burned when we're using biofuels, and the fission of uranium nuclei refers to a nuclear power plant. You should be able to link each one of these energy resources back to our work on stores and transfers. Pause the video and fill in the gaps. Fossil fuels, like oil, coal and gas, are a chemical store of energy. When this is burned, energy is transferred to the thermal store in the steam. As the steam moves the turbine, this is a kinetic store. In a hydroelectric power station, water is stored in a reservoir. This is a gravitational potential store of energy. Power stations are also a great opportunity to check your understanding about efficiency. If you don't remember how to do these calculations, go one video back in the playlist. We know that energy must be conserved, so if 800 megawatts of power are input to the power station and only 640 megawatts come out usefully, then the power wastage must be the difference, which is 160 megawatts. This wasted energy is going to increase the temperature of the surroundings, and the efficiency will be 0.8, or 80%. In evaluating a resource that can be used to generate electricity, we need to think about the advantages and disadvantages of using it. Non-renewable resources will run out, whereas renewable ones won't. Fossil fuel power stations release carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas which causes global warming. Burning biofuels also releases carbon dioxide. However, that same carbon dioxide that's being released when the bioethanol is burned has only very recently been taken in by the maize or the sugarcane plants. So sometimes this is referred to as a carbon neutral resource, because no new carbon dioxide is being released. Hydraulic cracking, or fracking, is used to mine for shale gas and oil, and this can cause earthquakes and other damage to the environment. Radioactive waste from nuclear power plants must be disposed of safely, and this can remain radioactive for a large number of years after the power plant is decommissioned. We also need to think about reliability. Will it be possible to meet the demands for electricity that people have at all times of the day or night and in all seasons? Solar power, wind power and wave power are all unreliable because we can't guarantee that it will be a sunny day or a windy day or that the waves will be a certain height. We can also think in terms of the energy density of fuel. 
Nuclear power plants use a fuel, uranium or plutonium, that has extremely high energy density. In other words, we only need a very small amount of fuel to generate a huge amount of electricity, and this is a big advantage. But it links to the next thing, fuel cost. That fuel is extremely expensive. We can also think about the existing infrastructure. What type of power plants do we already have, and can we keep using those? And finally, we might need to think about food security. Biofuels are made from maize or from sugarcane, which are things that we could be eating, and also the fields where they're grown could be used to grow other crops. In a time where many people are starving, is it ethically okay for us to be growing what's basically fuel? You may be asked to evaluate the relative merits of two different methods of generating electricity in a question such as this one. Extended response questions in AQA GCSE Science are worth between four and six marks, and they aren't essay questions, so it's fine to arrange your ideas in bullet points or a table as long as they're organised in a logical order. The command word here, evaluate, tells you that you need to compare and also write a conclusion, because the final mark is always for a conclusion that is backed up by the rest of your argument. In evaluating nuclear power plants and fossil fuel power plants, I'd want to be thinking about any advantages and disadvantages of one system over the other, as well as any ways in which they are similar to each other. So to begin with, I'd pick up on the fact that these are both non-renewable sources of generating electricity. In other words, they're both running out, although fossil fuels are running out faster than nuclear fuel. Then I'd want to think about the fact that the nuclear power station is going to produce radioactive waste, and that's going to need disposing of, and that's quite challenging to do. However, the fossil fuel power plant isn't exactly blameless because it's producing huge amounts of carbon dioxide. And I'd want to say that this is a greenhouse gas and it may be contributing to increased speeds of global warming. Then I could think about their reliability, but these are both very reliable sources of generating electricity. So although I would definitely include that point if I was comparing one of these to solar panels or to wind turbines, I might not include it here because they're both quite reliable. Then I could start thinking about the fuel that's being used. So the nuclear power plant uses uranium or plutonium, which has very high energy density, but also it is very expensive. Also, I probably want to include that with the nuclear power station, there is a very small chance of a nuclear accident. But even though the chances are very small, if it does happen, it will be really, really bad. So that's still a disadvantage. Now, my final mark for an evaluate question is always for writing a conclusion. And usually these questions are structured so that there isn't one right answer. You could pick either one of these and argue your case. You just have to back it up with some evidence. So in this instance, I'm going to say that I think that nuclear fuel is a better choice for a new power station because it's running out less quickly and it poses a lower risk to the environment because although radioactive waste is pretty bad, we do know how to contain it and the chances of a nuclear accident are really pretty small. Whereas greenhouse gases, we can't do anything to mitigate against it. We're producing carbon dioxide. It is going to have a contributing impact on global warming and there's nothing I can do to overcome that. So I'd rather not do it. Therefore, I think that nuclear is the better option. Thank you very much for watching this video and in fact this whole 10 part series on energy in GCSE physics. I hope you found the playlist useful and if you have then don't forget to like, subscribe and let me know in the comments which GCSE physics videos I should tackle next.